Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about magic. In this video I'm reacting to Wes Isley, a magician who appears to be from America and whom I've never heard of before. It seems to me that his name was created by combining Wesley Snipes with Mos Isley, and that's pretty much all I know about him so far. You'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Alright, I'm gonna stop messing around now, <laughs> let's just get into the reaction. Okay, I've got it right on target. Stay on target. I went to my dad's work one summer and some guy said, come here, kid. He reached behind my ear, pulled out a quarter, he gave it to me. I said, dad, who was that guy? He said, oh, it's a magician friend of mine. Magicians can make money appear out of thin air. I want that job. <laughs> After graduating college, I got a regular job working at a bank. I couldn't help but do magic all the time. Just trying to get customers to open accounts, showing them magic tricks. Now I do 400 shows a year and I get to travel with my wife and daughter. I love it so much. I mean, I lost my dad to Parkinson's disease when I was 25 years old. Now that we've had some success in our career, we worked with a Parkinson's disease charity in memory of my dad. If my dad could see my career now, he would be so proud, because I know he's still taking care of me. Please welcome Virginia's own Wes Isley. Oh, so he's from Virginia. Okay. Wow, wow. I can't believe I'm here tonight. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm gonna try to fool Penn and Teller with nothing more than a half dollar and a prediction. Allison, can I borrow you for one second? Do you have a pocket you can slip this into? Yes. Yes, perfect. So uh, just, that's a prediction. I gave it to you before the trick started. Just remember that, okay? okay. I also need you to examine this half dollar. Check it out, make sure nothing tricky is going on. In a second, we're gonna play the world's largest game of heads and tails. I need everyone in the room to go ahead and stand up. Penn and Teller, you too, please, if you could also stand up. Now, in playing the world's largest game of heads and tails, if everybody just yells out heads and tails, there's no way I would know who said what. Right. So you're gonna have to give me a sign or a signal. So the signal I made up for heads looks like this. So go ahead, everybody show me heads. Okay, and tails is hands by your side. Perfect, perfect. How's the coin? Everything it's good? coin. You're gonna be the eyes and ears of the audience. Okay. So when I flip the coin in the air and throw it on my hand, you have to tell everyone how it landed. Like okay. right now it is? Heads. And this way would be? Tails. I had a lady say eagle side the other day. You're already doing better than her. You're doing great, <laughs> you're doing great. Now I have to trust you on this because I'm gonna be looking at the audience. Okay. All right, here we go. Round one, you guys ready? This is interesting. It seems really minimal, which I like. Actually, I got a message from someone who was at the filming of Pin and Teller's Fool Us, and he said to me that he wants to see my opinion about the magic trick where they flip the coin a bunch of times. So I guess this is that magic trick. <laughs> but it was kind of cool to get the inside scoop a couple months before the show aired. Probably he was breaking all kinds of secrecy agreements, but... Anyway, I don't really know anything except for that a coin gets flipped a bunch of times. And, well, he gave Allison a prediction, so I guess that's going to be related to what the odds end up being. By the way, if any of you have been at the fooling of these Penn and Teller episodes, I would love to hear more details about that. Feel free to contact me or just leave a comment below. Back to his act. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, choose. Perfect. Heads! Heads. Now all the tails have a seat. See how quick we eliminate the audience? Oh. I forgot to vote. Penn and Teller? Okay, all right, here we go. They're already out. This is good, this is good. I think I've already fooled them. I think it's great. All right, ready? You guys can relax between the rounds. Relax between rounds. Round two, here we go. One, two, three, choose. Tails. All the heads have a seat. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. Choose. Tails. <laughs> All the heads have a seat. This is really cool. I like this idea. It seems like everyone gets to be involved, you know? They always say if you can perform a magic trick that actually involves even the spectator's hand or them doing something, it's a lot more interesting. And here the entire audience is involved, so that's really cool. Back to the video. I think they think they're gonna win the okay, coin. Okay, now here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. You are gonna win a grand prize. I promise you're gonna win a grand prize for playing. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, choose. Heads. Tails have a seat. <laughs> All right. We're trying to eliminate these people. Here we go. Ready, choose. Heads. Tails have a seat. Tails. Okay. Winner gets a grand prize. Here we go. One, two, three, choose. 
Tails. <laughs> Down to three. Final three. Here we go. And he's already going up, man. Wait for the coin flip, man. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Choose. Tails. Oh! All right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's you, sir, against you. Two people oh, left. Boy. Don't pick the same thing. So far in the game, you guys pick the same thing every round. Here we go. Choose. Tails. This guy just won! Give this guy a big round of applause! Come on up here, sir. Come on up. <laughs> Did you see the look on that guy's face as he sat down? He was like smiling and he's like, ah, just lost a chance at the grand prize. A big round of applause! Hello, darkness, my old. <laughs> Admittedly, I mean, I would be frustrated too. You come in second place. You were so close to whatever's in that bag. Okay, okay, back to the video. All right. Good job, good job. You're gonna stand right here for me, sir. Right here. Face the audience. Perfect. I like the. I like purple, man. That's my favorite color. I like it. Looks good. I have a prediction over here, Allison. For the first time, can you open that up? Okay. Read that out loud. It says. It says. The luckiest person will be wearing a black jacket, purple shirt, glasses, and has a beard. Come on, guys. Like, I've got a beard? <laughs> if everyone could give this guy a big round of applause, you're awesome. Thank you very much. Wes Isley, everyone! I could not love that to wow. So, what's the best part of magic for you? Just the fact that I get to do it with my family. Your daughter performs as well. Yeah, I have an eight-year-old daughter, um, and she's on the road with us, my wife and daughter and I. And Wow, and yeah. when did she start performing? When she was four days old. Four days? Four days old. Oh. So my <laughs> wife um, was told that she, we were going to have a baby uh, December 31st. That's great, but that's New Year's Eve. That's a big night for magicians. Oh. So I'm like, if I'm not at the show, I could get sued. If I'm not there for the birth of my child, my wife's gonna kill me. Yeah. Dude, what can we do? So uh, we induced her. She was born on the 28th, and four days later, we took a final bow with her at the end of the show. Oh, so. yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh. Is she here tonight? Uh, yes, my wife and daughter are in the audience. Wave, girls, wave. Hi! Very cool. Aww. Supportive family. All right, well, let's go to the guys and see if you fooled them. All right. Okay, I'll go ahead and give you my thoughts real quick before we hear Penn and Teller. My first thought is, what was the grand prize? What was in that bag? I mean, we don't even get to see. Was it wine? Was it a gift certificate to Golden Corral? <laughs> I guess buffets are not allowed anymore right now. A gift certificate to Applebee's? Anyway, I guess we will never know. Go ahead and leave a comment below what you think was in the gift bag. Maybe you could actually see it and I just didn't notice. But perhaps there's something more important to discuss than just what was in the gift bag. All right, so uh, I gotta say that I enjoyed this concept and this performance. I kinda do feel like I have an idea how it was done. Admittedly, I could be totally wrong, but I do immediately have a concept. And I'm guessing that most people might be thinking this as well, but I'm feeling like he could just feel in his hand which side was tails and which side was heads. And then when he puts it down, he can just control it. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, with a prediction effect, he gave Allison the prediction at the beginning, it was in her pocket, it was all written out with marker. The prediction is so perfect that it basically implies that he had a way to control the outcome to make sure that it matched the prediction. That's almost one of those kind of like two perfect things, you know? Like if the prediction was sitting there in a box instead, then maybe you're thinking, hmm, there could be someone inside the table writing in the box and sticking it up inside, but it was in her pocket and she just opened it and read it, so there's no chance to alter that. All right, that's my idea. Let's go ahead and hear from Penn and Teller. Penn Teller. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Wes, um, first thing Teller said to me, that is the most pen trick we've ever had on the show. That is a trick I have been trying to do for about 10 years. I always want the entire audience to be voting and be eliminated. I'm always looking for that. As soon as you started it, started the premise, I was just crazy in love with this routine. Um, I don't care what Teller thinks of it. Although Teller liked it, I liked it more. <laughs> That's kind of funny because in the previous performance with uh, DK, see my reaction video for that, Pin was saying how that performance was almost designed perfectly for Teller. So anyway, it's kind of funny they one after another got performances that were like perfectly curated for themselves. Back to what they were saying. 
We also love the fact that you traveled here with just a coin. Now, here's where we come down to where the game's actually played, okay? We first thought that you were taking a glimpse of the coin before you decided head or tails. We decided you didn't do that. We know you did not get a glimpse. We think there's a switch there after she examined it and you're using a gaffed coin. We're trusting on your honor. Is the coin, is the coin gaffed? Uh, not a gaff coin at all? No, sir. Shut up. <laughs> I think that was his we're, wife. No, no, we're not, we're not done, we're not done yet. Okay. There's nothing I like more than chance. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada. Pull out the damn coin. Pull out the coin. Put it in your hand. You flip it in the air. You catch it. <laughs> I'm going to call it. If I call it correctly, you didn't fool us. Oh. If I call it wrong, you fooled it. Same way you did it. Well, stand up and play the game. I will play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and stand up. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. You're gonna get it wrong. I don't think so. <laughs> Choose. So congratulations to Wes Isley. Congratulations on winning the Fooler Trophy. I have to admit, I'm kind of surprised that Penn and Teller were thinking it would be a gaff coin, like you switched them out. That thought didn't come into my mind at all. I guess I'm still thinking that he was somehow able to feel it with his fingers. And now I'm curious if it was a normal coin or if it was like, you know, he cut a mark into it or it had some kind of bump like Braille where he could feel it. Something small enough that Allison wouldn't notice it while examining it, but that he could still be able to feel. Or it would be really interesting to know if he could do this with any coin, like as long as it was like newly printed and not too smoothed down. It would be interesting to know if his sense of touch was so accurate that he could just feel the difference. Because if that is how he did it, which I don't know, then it's really impressive. What about you? What did you think? Leave a comment below what you thought about his performance and if you have any concept of how it was done. Maybe this is something we can all try at home and see if we're able to like feel the difference. This kind of makes me think about Richard Turner who's uh, mostly blind and he has such a sensitive fingers he can, well, he can do a lot with cards that most people can't. But I digress. Awesome job, Wes Isley. It was a very enjoyable performance to watch. And now it's time for Aesop's Fable. Maybe we will glean a pearl of wisdom. Ooh, this one's rather long and interesting. Chapter 60, The Owl and the Birds. And look at this photograph. That's not a photograph, that's an illustration. Look at this beautiful illustration. Since this one is almost an entire page long, I'll try to read it quickly. The Owl and the Birds The owl is a very wise bird, and once, long ago, when the first oak sprouted in the forest, she called all the other birds together and said to them, You see this tiny tree? If you take my advice, you will destroy it now when it is small, for when it grows big, the mistletoe will appear upon it, from which bird lime will be prepared for your destruction. <laughs> Again, when the first flax was sown, she said to them, Go and eat up that seed, for it is the seed of the flax, out of which men will one day make nets to catch you. Once more, when she saw the first archer, she warned the birds that he was their deadly enemy, who would wing his arrows with their own feathers and shoot them. But when they took no notice of what she said, in fact, they thought she was rather mad, and laughed at her, when, however, everything turned out as she had foretold. They changed their minds and conceived a great respect for her wisdom. Hence, whenever she appears, the birds attend upon her in the hope of hearing something that may be for their good. She, however, gives them advice no longer, but sits moping and pondering on the folly of her kind. Is there a moral of this story? Nope. So what can we say? If someone is giving you a benefit, if someone's helping you, and you don't appreciate them for too long, eventually they may stop helping you out. So in this case, we can say it's important to pay attention to people and express appreciation. I think that's a pretty direct thing to interpret from this story. I wonder if there's anything else more subtle. Ah, we could comment about the timeliness of action because the owl was pointing out that when the seed is small, 
they could destroy it. If they let the tree grow, then it's gonna be a bigger problem. So we can say, a stitch in time saves nine. Nine. Yeah, that's a good nether pearl there. I like the way they said that too. From which bird lime will be prepared for your destruction. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a pretty cool story. You can see here again all the birds ignoring the wisdom from the owl. All right, did you guys have any other interpretations? Any other things we could say about that? Leave a comment below. I will read them and put a heart. So that takes care of the Aesop's fable. And thanks for watching this video. Thanks for smashing like, subscribe, notifications, etc. I'm super starving right now, but I'm gonna film one more reaction. I'm gonna eat a banana and then I'm gonna go to the gym and then I'll come back and feast and then proceed to edit a video for six hours and upload it hopefully tonight. Yeah, generally speaking, these reaction videos, even though they seem quite simple, they take me around six hours to edit. And believe me, I look for ways to be more efficient and productive, but that's as good as I've gotten it to be. A little bit of random information for you there. So anyways, thanks again for watching and I hope you're having a splendid week and a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.